So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Malcolm, for giving us the opportunity to be here. It's just awesome. And uh, I just cannot tell you how excited I am to be here in Toronto uh, with all of you. You know, we began planning this conference just over a year ago, and I am just so excited that it's finally here and we're all together. So I cannot believe how um, our community has grown. It was just tremendous seeing everybody all around, and it's just, it's just amazing. Uh, what's even more exciting is knowing that many of our family uh, and our community are going to be able to watch this live. So thanks to Dr. Malkin and some of his magical surprises last minute, uh, we actually have people around the world uh, that are able to watch this conference live. So I just want to say hello to everybody, uh, all of you at home, wherever you may be, and know that you're with us in spirit uh, throughout this conference. When we last met in Ohio, I actually spoke with you about strength, resilience, and balance. And when all three are aligned, we can truly be successful together. Uh, we all have our individual roles and goals, but we must balance ourselves with the priorities of the end goal. Our takeaway was that we are LFS strong, and when we work all as one together, we are LFS stronger. So today, I'm excited to share with you some of the key milestones since that last conference within the organization and the community. So since we last met, we have actually developed seven international chapters, USA, Brazil, Canada, Germany, New Zealand, the Netherlands, and Saudi Arabia. This has not only been exciting, but really truly rewarding as we're able to serve communities uh, right in their own and neighboring countries, connect individuals who otherwise may not know where to turn, and supply necessary education and resources of all types. So for example, our physicians in Germany are helping those in Italy, and also the ones in New Zealand are working with our Australian community. Some of our international first ever community events include Brazil's first awareness walk with both patients and doctors. New Zealand's Nord meeting had their first ever LFSA chapter presence, and Germany is hosting their first LFSA family conference in July. St. Jude's will be holding their first family conference in June, and Saudi Arabia's Gulf Cancer Conference last month had their first LFSA chapter presence. If you can imagine, nearly every country on the planet has visited our website, even from Togo and Burundi. In fact, nearly 5,000 new visitors come to our site every month. We've taken some groundbreaking steps in forming a medical advisory board and a genetic counseling advisory group. These two groups are instrumental in helping identify priorities, collaborating on key projects and issues, and working towards supporting our patients and families on their medical and psychological needs. These two groups have been incredibly generous of their valuable time and talent and have already made a significant difference in some of the key issues we are all facing today. You're going to have a chance during the conference to hear about some of these exciting projects, and you're going to be able to provide feedback to those teams as to what challenges you're facing and really how we can better serve you. We became a member of NORD, which opens the doors for everyone here in this room. It affects all of us and adds to that strength portion in the messaging that I mentioned earlier. It will really allow us the opportunity to reach more communities faster and have access to other organizations that share similar situations uh, as a rare disorder. And this is really important because sharing best practices and resources can really ultimately help us reach the end goal even more quickly. One of the major priorities and takeaways from the last conference was our youth. It really is a segment of our community uh, that truly is special, precious, and underserved. They are our next generation. They are our future. It truly hit me hard at the last conference that this had to be a huge priority going forward. As I felt, although the conference in Ohio was tremendous, we were missing some key folks, and that was our children. I literally decided on that last day that we were going to do something special for our youth. I really wasn't quite sure what it was, but I was already drumming up ideas in my head. And with the help of Dr. Schiffman, Dr. Lisa Beglin, Kathy Schneider, Wendy Coleman, and the entire staffs at both the Huntsman Cancer Institute and the Hogel Zoo, uh, we put on our first ever 2017 LFSA Youth Workshop. And although it was really a test run for many reasons, it now has become our model. It was an incredible experience, and for me personally, it was life-changing. We brought in 21 youth from six different countries. We... <laughs> we 
We threaded the link of science and how that related to their future. At the Hogel Zoo, where they had the chance to meet the elephants and their trainers who are involved in some incredible research. We also brought in Allison Levine. She's a leadership speaker who is one of only 46 people in the world who has ascended the highest peak on every continent and has skied both poles. It's called the Adventure Grand Slam. She motivated the kids to be leaders and advocates for themselves. And she also challenged and charged them to rely on one another. In fact, she told them that they have to become their own unit and a new team. They had an opportunity to work in Dr. Schiffman's lab and use the equipment to work with their own DNA and to see research at its best. We had education, we had incredible activities, and tons of fun and networking for all. The S'mores bar was pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie, it was awesome. <laughs> I feel though by far the biggest win truly was that every team can be themselves. It didn't matter if they had cancer, if they didn't have cancer, it didn't matter what scars they had or any other challenges they might have been dealing with. What did matter is that you can be themselves. Uh, no worries, no explanations, no sideward glancers or awkward moments of judging. In fact, it was truly remarkable how fast they bonded, even with the language barriers, when none of them had ever met each other before. In the end, our team came hopeful with a vision, and we left lifelong friends. We are now proud to say we have officially launched our youth program. So one of my personal goals is coming to fruition as we have several of the teens here that were at the workshop right here today. In fact, I invite all of you and hope that you visit their booth and talk with many of the teens at the conference. You're gonna have the opportunity to include your children in the program and we actually have a sign up sheet at the booth. So if you're interested in doing that, feel free. We're also launching our first quarterly youth newsletter and we have copies for everyone at the youth booth. And lastly, I am thrilled to share with you that our next youth workshop is going to be the weekend of August 23rd in 2019 in Boston at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. So please stay tuned on our website because that's going to be a very exciting event. Tremendous progress and work has been done, but we are well aware that there's much more to do. I'd like to talk about just four letters and keywords that I feel are critical to our success as a group. So the first is leadership, L for leadership. The definition of leadership is to show the way to a destination by going in front of or beside them. Now I know that seems like a common word, but I consider it a fundamental piece if we're to reach our end goal. When I was growing up, my dad and I did some pretty special things. Uh, we had some pretty special moments. But since I was five, we, one of my favorite things to do with him is we used to go to the Patriots game as he had season tickets. Okay, now before you roll your eyes, I know the Patriots, right? But you have to understand, when I used to go to the games, they were so bad in so many ways, they were actually banned from Monday Night Football, if you can believe it, okay? So you need to understand what I was watching at the time. Um, but it was very special to me. Flash forward to today, yep, it's a whole different story. And I know the players get an awful lot of recognition, um, and in one in particular, incredibly determined quarterback. But to me, my hero, who I actually had the opportunity to meet, is Bill Belichick. He came in and created a culture of leadership and empowerment. Belichick's approach has been described as do your job, hold your people accountable, which may partly explain why he's one of the most winningest coaches in the history of professional sports. Belichick is often heard referring to every member of the Patriots organization as a shareholder. Not the players alone, but every member from the front office to the coaching staff. And being a shareholder, Belichick has said, translates into having an opportunity to show positive leadership. In other words, values don't belong to the organization. They are the property of each individual and are held collectively, just like each one of us here today and around the world in our growing community. We all have a very important piece in being the, in the forefront. We need to spearhead these projects, take calculated risks, and actually in some cases, uncalculated risks, to be a voice and lead in whatever capacity we have the opportunity to. Ronald Reagan once said, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He's the one who gets the people to do the greatest things. Consider I for an intentional. I challenge all of us here today to be intentional. Intentional means it's done on purpose, planned, deliberate, studied, and purposeful. John C. Maxwell said, why do so many people do nothing? 
I think it's because most of us look at the evils and injustice around us and we actually become overwhelmed. The problems look too big for us to tackle. We say to ourselves, what can I do? I'm just one person. One person is a start. One person can act and can make a change by helping another. One person can inspire a second person to be intentional and then another. Those people can work together. They can become a movement. They can, never, they can make an impact. We should never let what we cannot do keep us from doing what we can do. A passive life does not become a meaningful life. Just imagine the possibilities. If we all thought this way, if every day we planned for the following day and how we can do something, there is no act too small. Every year we have 365 opportunities to make a difference. Think F for force. The definition is a person or thing regarded as exerting power or influence. Yes, you. We are a force. In order to be a force, you need to create energy, to find strength to continue, even when you don't know how. It's putting one foot at a time in front of the other. It's taking the hand of the person next to you and lifting them up. Social media has become a vehicle that is a force for sure. LFSA reaches thousands of people over the globe through social media every day. Our audience engagement through platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is truly incredible. And we've seen tremendous increases in reach from year to year when looking at LFSA's online presence and overall impact. Twitter alone has reached over 35,000 impressions in the first quarter this year. We have followers from over 50 countries on Facebook who are checking in from wherever they are in the world to see the latest in the LFSA updates and outreach. That's force. This quote inspires me and really describes the concept well. Albert Einstein said, there is a driving force more powerful than steam, electricity, and nuclear power, the will. The last letter and word I would ask you to focus on is T for tenacious. Tenacious is not readily relinquishing a position, principle, or course of action. Determined. This is a very empowering word. We must stay the course. We need to be persistent, steadfast, and unwavering in our efforts, successes, and setbacks. Not every risk is going to be rewarding as you strive to find solutions and breakthroughs in research. You may be unhealthy at times or know someone who is. You may get discouraged as a physician or a counselor when you don't have the answers or you face bureaucratic roadblocks. You know, interestingly enough, a synonym of tenacious is patient. Sometimes the best course of action is to remember we are all in it for the long haul together. Dr. Maya Angelou said, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. L-I-F-T, leadership, intentional, force, and tenacious. These four powerful words have led our organization to create a very special campaign that I need your help to create to become a movement. I would like to share the start of this movement with you. Lift for LFS begins right here, right now. Yes, it's a campaign, but it needs to become more than that. It needs to become a movement with every single person involved. It doesn't matter whether you're a patient, a family member, a friend, a doctor, a scientist, a genetic counselor. Every single person needs to be engaged, motivated, and excited about this. We have to become a household name. We have to raise funds for research. We have to be there to support everyone. What's really important is that we have a future without LFS, or at least one that is certainly in control. So I'm asking all of you today to think about how you can lift for LFS. I'm lifting up my legs for LFS to kick out cancer. Today I lift my voice for LFS. I am lifting my voice because my two girls no longer have a voice, but I do. So I am lifting my voice for LFS. I lift for strength. Let's build muscle to fight against cancer. I'm lifting this bike for LFS because if we all lift something for LFS, we can fight the condition better. In the name of LFS, I'm lifting up my dad to beat cancer because he beat it himself. Woo! We lift our paw to LFS positive girl. I lift myself up. 
Let's be stronger than cancer. Tania Farmers lifting for LFS. I'm lifting up. I'm lifting up. I'm lifting up. We're lifting up for LFS. I lift my mother up in the name of LFS. We lift our glasses for LFS to wash away cancer. It's really, really important that everyone does something to lift for LFS. Today I'm here for my entire family and I'm here for each one of you. I am. And I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I lift for LFS. So I'm lifting for everyone today. Lifting for LFS. The big question I have for you is what will you lift for LFS? you with this as I have some pretty special people next to me here. We must raise awareness until we become a household name. We need to support our patients and families and raise critical funds for research and education. We need to be creative in our approaches. We can't be satisfied with the ways in which we have approached LFS in the past. We will not make progress without authentic partnership, new ideas, and strategies working with people. Finding workarounds for barriers or getting necessary help when we are stuck or overwhelmed. We must lift each other up. I ask you to lift each other's spirits when things get tough. Lift a helping hand when we see the work is too much for another. Lift a pen to write a note of support. Lift your feet, get to the town hall or Washington to talk to your legislative leadership and be persistent for change. Lift up a stack of awareness brochures, bring them to the doctor, the dentist, or school teacher who may not know about LFS. Lift up your phone and call a peer for help with a patient case or brainstorm on a research project you're working on. Lift up your arms and hug the patient or family member who has suffered. In fact, I ask you right now to please lift your arm. Come on, I know, just humor me. Everyone lift their arm, you gotta do it. I challenge each one of you and my call to action for all of us to lift for LFS. How will you become a part of this movement? Make it go viral. Help make LFS go from rare to aware. What will you lift for LFS? Thank you, everyone.